Um, one of my favorite things is playing instruments, and particularly instruments that were just play off the chart, so you have quick and easy boom getting it together. But it reinforces steady beat uh, and playing along with steady beat. So, I mean, oh, look at you, you've got the two. You are a professional. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Bailey will do that for you. <laughs> coordination. That's right. Um, we're going to see if this works. Um, and I need to switch it to see. Um, first, a little introduction to what this is. I'll show you the book when we're done. Um, hang on one second. <coughs> classroom has a performance thing they have to do on Thursday night for share time. So um, our classroom was, um, our theme was the sea. And so our, we had to do an anthem and then we had to do some sort of movement or instrument or something that, that reinforced steady beat. So we did under the sea uh, for hours and I had the, the stage. Any of you ever been to Shaco Springs, Alabama? It's the <laughs> state camp and they have a big old stage. But when you have up with 30 kids in orchestras, it's not big anymore. So we had, uh, I had a pairs that were sitting at pairs uh, at, at the organ instruments and spread all. It looked impressive. Even if, you know, if they hadn't sounded good, it looked really good. <laughs> and then the in between, hey girlfriend, uh, in between we had uh, Susan go over there and pick something that doesn't have pitch to play along. That's what they did. How many of you got something that doesn't have pitch to play along? Oh, good. The people that don't have the pitch, um, you can improvise your accompaniment. So just play wherever you want to. Okay? That's dangerous. <laughs> but anyway, so we had this. And then on the in-between parts is the interlude. They all had beach balls. Every partner said so they would stand up and they passed the beach ball, you know, and they're supposed to walk to having fun. <laughs> Sometimes they did. And then on the very last they threw the beach balls at myself and my husband. And we just made this glorious little grand finale. It was easy squeezy, but I love playing off charts. So I have Vanna is going to do this chart. So you are the alto line and you are the bass line. And this melody is played on the um, CD. So let's just start with the let's see. I'm so afraid to move this. <coughs>
um, and then Christ. It sounded so glorious for, with all those organ instruments, and did I forget that I had three organ instruments over there that we could use? But um, it's you thinking, how they did that on organ instruments? Well, they were used to, it's only a few bars. <coughs> um, so if you were in here yesterday, you know, I take off a placeholder on each side of it, and it was kind of bunched together. And they managed it beautifully. Uh, we actually had more difficult parts written, and when I got there, we stepped back and hunted and wrote simpler parts. So um, that, um, thank you, Sharon. And Sharon managed it. How about the track you used? I'm going to find that book under the computer and show you that. Yeah. That, um, I went on, on Amazon and I was searching for, um, I can't remember exactly what my, my search parameters were, but it's mallet percussion. So it's, it, you have the track that doesn't have the solo on it, so you can play marimba or something. And it has, um, it's got all these Disney, all these Disney songs on there. That one laid out so nicely because it's in C. You know, I have to figure out. I know, I love it. And of course, you know, the, uh, the track that was in the right key. So um, it worked great. And so we had the melody going on the, my original plan was that they would play part of the melody. But then, like, you know, you have to adjust for the ability level of your kids, and they were sort of, um, they were sort of um, not ready for that. <laughs> so, you know, you always have to be flexible and adapt. And I think it was beneficial um, what we did do, and they had a really a good sense of accomplishment. You know, so for something fun, or can do some sort of thing thing for some, you know, can you provide a little music? You know what I'm talking about. The, the, the mission ladies and the Bible study ladies. We're having this little thing, we need a little entertainment. This is the kind of thing that might come in handy for that. Um, but it also fit really well with our theme because um, we sang um, a simulated song. So that's one of my favorite things. So back to the beginning. Okay, so. Some that have the notation, or at least part of the notation, where you might have the stems with the letter name on the stems, and then I have some of the actual notation with the staff, just, just depends. And if you are um, able to do Finale, the music notation software, you can now have that with the colored note heads. You can also have them with the letter names inside of the note heads. And um, that helps reinforce. And, and those little children. We've been talking this week about getting on the bus, and the children that have been on the bus the whole way have learned all those those little steps. But the kids that just got on the bus, they might be 12 years old, but they just got on the music bus. So we need to make it successful, and, uh, easily accessible for them, so that they can have a successful experience. So um, adding the letters is totally fine. If you felt guilty about that, I absolve you of that guilt. <laughs> me what, what is my favorite color? I'll say red, though I really do like green, and I really like purple, and I'll name every color. You know, I just have everything is my favorite. It's kind of that way with activities, because one week I'm all about rhythm stuff, and then I get all excited about melody stuff, and, and then of course you know I love books, you know I love doing the books, so everything is my favorite. So, um, you know, whatever you get is what you get. So I'm going to add a few things that came up this week. But that was um, the charts. It is one of the main things, playing off the charts. I don't even know if I did. I put that on there? The first thing. <coughs> the first thing. Uh, I don't think I actually put that kind of charts on there. So we'll start with pocket charts. We'll go down the list, and then we'll add some things as we go. Um, I talked about pocket charts a little bit this week. But using pocket charts truly relates to using those kinds of charts. Um, this particular 
chart that I have over here, I don't like. The only reason I like it is because it folds up well in the suitcase. It was, uh, but it works. It'll, you know, it, it serves its purpose. Um, Oriental trading. They have those from time to time. You can get those, and it's that that really. It's that shopping bag, you know, the free, the shopping bags like the Pine Lake is, it's just that kind of fabric, so it's very lightweight. Uh, but it has uh, one, two, three, four, five, six rows in the rows down here. It doesn't line up well for doing this kind of activity because you have to space it out. Uh, you run out of room very quickly. But this week, some of you were in here with this earlier this week, so these represent quarter notes. Um, and playing them on boom records and so forth. But that's one way to do it. I also like to put um, actual notations. I have tons of four by six index cards. I wish I had bought stock in four by six index <laughs> cards. I have two large, um, they're not shoe boxes, they're those um, photo boxes are full of four by six cards of various things. Many of them are different picture icons. Um, for seasonal things or to go along with the song we're doing. Um, some of you do that. One of them I'm doing the fall is um, candy corn. And so I have a single candy corn on those would be corn. And if we yeah, all of those were candy corn, had me, it would be corn, 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 corn. If we flipped them over, it would have two little candy corns together, like our eight, like our split hearts. Like that. So then that would be instead of beat, 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 and beat, or ta, ta, ti, ti, ta, for the candy corn, it would be corn, corn, candy, corn. And it's just icons that most children that are, are, are new to music reading or less experienced, it's less threatening. With your little guys, with the preschoolers, that's where you begin. So you begin with something familiar, but even your older kids, it's less threatening to introduce um, the notation. The other thing is those kids that are really on top of it can quickly transfer that. Um, so I have all the cards, the notation cards that go with it. So I love that. So my number one pocket chart, on the top ten pocket charts, my number one pocket chart is made by Carson DeLosa. It's called um, the Crayons Chart. And I'm pretty sure they still make it. And the reason it's called crayons is it has four strips of different color. I want to think it's the red, green, yellow, and blue. And they're vertical. It still has the same kind of pocket going across. Um, and it's a good wide one. It's about that wide. But the cool thing about that is you can organize each line. You can clearly see this is the first beat. This is because it's a different color. So you have a different color for each um, column of beats. And you can find those if you check Amazon. But Carson DeLosa also has a website. And you can also, also um, on the bottom there. But that's um, the crayon chart. Also, the teacher's supply store, some of them, <coughs> if they don't have them, they'll order for you. Now, the other charts that I have up there, those three actually connect. They Velcro together, top to bottom. And you can use those in the same kind of way. But um, I, ch I don't do uh, grouping now the way I did when I did this. But this was just a fantastic way to separate my, um, my older kids for when we would transition to small groups. So we would have three groups, we, you know, do our whole group rehearsal, and then we split up into three groups, the sharps, the flats, and the naturals. And so they would look to see where their picture is, so they would know which group they were in. And it would stay like that for three weeks. Okay, so tonight, Miss Susan has the sharps, Miss Allison has the flats, Miss Jennifer has the naturals. Next week, Miss Jennifer has the sharps, Miss Susan has the flats. See what I'm saying? So they, they rotate, the teachers rotate, the kids stay the same. After three weeks, I mix up the pictures and create three new groups. That way, you don't have little clicks that start because they're all always in the same group. It cuts down on the discipline issues. And after three weeks, you know who shouldn't be together. <laughs> so we, we split those up and separate them. Um, and I also would put the pit teacher's name, pit teacher's picture uh, for the night in there, but I didn't happen to have those. That would go in there as well. And then I would move the teacher's picture 
each week. That's one of the, the best things I ever did with that chart. Um, so it might be if you, any of you do small groups and you need a way to organize, that's a that's a fun fun way. And I love to run in at the end of the three weeks to see what group they're in, who's in the group, and complain. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so that's pocket charts. And the other pocket chart, some of you saw, let me real quick grab one, uh, the other day, or the, the ones that I found in the dollar bins at um, Target. And they have them from time to time. And you know what? If I'm not crazy, because I am crazy sometimes, they have, uh, they sometimes have these at Dollar Tree. Did I dream that? Did anybody send these at Dollar Tree? I have. Okay. Yeah, you know, go around the start of school, they put all that stuff out, but for one dollar. Um, so you can use these for yourself. I put it on the door with instructions or whatever, but the main thing I like to do is do it individually or with partners, and they put it on the floor, and they have the little cards that go in them with the icons and the music notes and everything, and they can do, so you could clap a rhythm, they could spell it out, or you could say create a beats pattern, and they could spell it out, and everybody could play theirs. And the neat thing is, once they put it in the little pockets, then they can hold it up for everyone to see. So it's best to sit on the floor, but then every, you know, nobody can see it, but then they can hold it up. So that's for a dollar. You know, I've probably got a dozen of those. Um, just, and they fold up nicely, too. How many of you have to move in and out of your room? You don't get to park in the same, same room, or you share the room? with maybe the adult choir or Sunday school or so Things need to be portable and easy to, to drag in and out. So I love, love that little feature about pocket charts. I did, though, with those pictures, my husband's the minister of music, and I hung those in the adult choir room, and I said, those are staying. And he said, okay. Um, because I didn't have to move that every, every time. And, they were back. and actually, the adult choir was thrilled and could see, wow, look at all those kids we have this week. So um, it's a great thing for sharing. Uh, on the little smiley number two, we have the body scale. How many of you use the body scale in, in choirs? If, if you don't, uh, I highly recommend it. Um, rather than the hand signs for your, your little children, um, as they get older, if you want to transition to the hand signs, and if you're not a Kodai person, don't have the training, sometimes the hand signs, hmm, they're a little threatening. Yeah. But the body scale is so simple. Let's all stand up and we'll practice it. That uh, particular one over there is uh, from Jane Grace. Uh, I want to think it was uh, younger children this past spring. Does that look familiar? Is that right? Okay. And so, and then this one over here is from this coming up fall. Uh, and I love the monkeys. Okay. And uh, typically I would put them vertically. But I had already asked my husband to climb up that high, and, and so I put those up there. <laughs> and the little spots behind them, by the way, are place mats in the party supply area at Hobby Lobby. I just love those spots. I'm going to keep those. Um, they, they kind of popped off the, the wall with those. But Libby Carlton came up with um, this particular placement of the body scale. There are many body scales around the music education world, but Libby Carlton came up with this one. And so Doe, low Doe is on your knees, and notice that you have to keep your back straight, okay, so keep your behind out, or your head goes this way. So we don't want them to sing to the floor, okay, so that's, and it's actually really good. I can just make you stand like that. <laughs> so that's Doe, and then Ray is on your thighs. Doesn't that feel good? Now you love me again. And then Ray is on your thighs. Knees at your waist, if you can still find it. It's here somewhere, I know. I can find it somewhere. And then fa, there's always been a little confusion where is fa, but it is your ribs. Again, if you can find them. I used to have ribs. They're there somewhere. And then so, people just do this, but we don't do this. It's so. Okay? Now feel what happens. Do that again and just roll up. And what happens to all of this when you do so? It opens the whole thing up. So don't let your kids do this. Get them to do this, and it will open up that whole breathing mechanism and let their lungs fill up like they should. Then law is the top of the head. 
T is what we used to say, raise the roof. I don't even know if kids can do that. And you can do the T this way. So I do that too sometimes. I do <laughs> forget. But T is up here. Uh, and I kind of do this too to help them. And then do is high though, um, like this. I have a little song. And if I'm lucky, I'll find it. I know you don't have that problem.
I may answer you on Hotmail just because of the size of uh, anything you might send. If you forget it, just email me and I'll send you a little, a little uh, melody with that. Anything that you need from me, you can email me or a question you have, and I, may, I will get back to you. Um, it might not be tomorrow. <laughs> I don't think it's going to get to you tomorrow because I'm going to be on the road um, today and tomorrow. But I love that. And while you're writing, if you really like that, there's a um, there's a um, song from Music K8 of Quanko Publishing called Wacky Do Re Mi. Then the H A C K Y, Wacky Do Re Mi. Um, I think you can buy a single now. It, it came years ago and. In the one of the collections, but now I think you can get it a single. And when I did that in the public school classroom, that's how I introduced the body scale with Wacky Do Re Mi. And it has boom wacker parts you can play along, um, and you put bells with it. Um, that's a great little, great little tune. Where'd you get that from? Go to. Um, you can get there usually do music letter K number eight letter K number eight music K eight dot com or Plank Road Publishing. Because that's who publishes music K8. If you can't find it, let me know, and I'll I'll send you the link. But that is really fun. It's got got Drake. Do you know it? I, I have I've done that. It's somewhere on here, and I can't access it. Well, of course, I'll find it as soon as it's released. Uh, but it's a great another great thing uh, to do for reinforcing the body scale. And then, and then you can use it in your anthem teaching or your song teaching as well. You have a difficult pattern. Um, we did the one, you know, the go, we said go over there, and it was, we will rejoice in the chorister. That works great with the body scale. Okay? All right, here's another little, it's like drag out all the stuff. Uh, swim noodle vocal exploration. Sometimes they're too fat. So buy one and take it with you to the other store to try it out. This is a coupler. Yeah, mm -hmm. am I right? And this is an elbow. Mm -hmm. okay. And it's this kind of elbow. So it looks like, 90. was that, what is that? What, 90. 90, is that 90 degrees? No. Okay, so it's that, that kind of elbow. It works pretty well. And so the idea is that you dump this out on the floor and you give the kids, you say you've got three minutes, and they have to work together as a group to create a vocal exercise. So we did that. Um, and so they put it, you know, in various ways. So how about I have uh, three volunteers, and we're going to put you over there and let you come up with a vocal exercise. And what I'm saying is something, some sort of shape, and then you have to, and you, you have to agree amongst yourselves 
of what sound we want to do. Ooh, we want to e, we want to change the colors. What do we want to do? Do I have three volunteers that might like to do that? How about you three ladies right here? And we want this into the world. Uh, while we're doing that, some of you haven't been in here yet. Is this your first class with me? Mm -hmm. This first class with me. I've never been here before. And how are you doing? Good, Alice. I wondered if you were in the, in the, in the land. <laughs> okay. I'm Susan Ernesty, and um, I drove in from Carrollton, Georgia, not Texas, and um, brought all this mess with me. And my 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 hat that I hat that I wear today is clinician, but I, the hat, hats I wear is I do children's music, um, coordinating and directing in my church, and church staff, and I. Um, write stuff for uh, Growing in Grace sometimes, and I do some editing for them sometimes, and I do some freelance editing for other people, and um, I'm the editor of the Chorister magazine for Chorister Skills. So that sort of sums it up. I'm also a mom, and I have three grandchildren. I would show you pictures, but that would be just shameless. <laughs> um, and I have a, uh, oh my goodness. What is today? 24. 24. My puppy will be 11 months old on Sunday. So I'm the mom of a puppy. Um, after 20 years of another dog, almost 20 years of another dog, um, I forgot what it was like to have a puppy. <laughs> and I fell in love. And then the rest is history. So I have to this puppy. Uh, so we're starting all over. Let's see. All right, we'll give him another minute. Adults take longer. <laughs> the great thing about this is kids, if you see they have to work together, okay, and, so, and they're creating, okay, and then it gives, they're going to present it, so it gives them the leadership um, possibilities. I love that. Let's see if you can work Yes.
six. I didn't, I didn't say you can't use other stuff, so they did this. They got stick and they put here. things, put them in 
newsletters or put them on cards and different things like that, little birthday cards and things like that. And then it has a Christmas program that incorporates the songs from each age group and the spring program, which does the same thing. So it's kind of it's kind of like if you ever used plans and pluses that used to be just kind of these kind of plans and pluses, but it doesn't have the CD ROM, it's just a downloadable product. Um, so it's, it's a pretty good value. And I don't think I put this on your list, um, but they also, another favorite thing and it's, is devotionals. Did I put devotionals on here? It's choir devotionals? Yes. Of course. Okay. Uh, there's, there's various ways to do that, um, to have a devotional moment, even if it's the last four minutes or three minutes of choir. It's so important to wrap it all up and um, and make that connection for a lot of these kids. They need to bring it all together. Not a lot of them, all of us. Don't send the kids. Um, Grody Grace has a set for each each year that is a free download, and you don't have to buy the curriculum to get that. You just go to Grody Grace and find it, and you purchase it for nothing. Uh, I just downloaded this year's. But my favorite one of those was um, in year one was the step by step of footprints. And uh, it was, the whole year was about um, Romans 12. They didn't take a break for Advent and um, Lent, I think, and or Easter. They then had other devotionals. But for that year, they focused on Romans chapter 12. And that was an interesting year in the life of my choir. And years too, if, if you think back to that year, um, we had, um, this on a personal note, we had a little a child uh, just two blocks from our church uh, run over by a car, mm -hmm. and he was very popular, the kids all knew him, um, and was killed, you know, just almost from the inside of our church. Um, with just standing next to his dad, they went across, they had pizza, and went across the street, and he stepped out in front of the truck. And it, was, it wasn't his fault, it wasn't the truck driver's fault, it was poor traffic management, the lights, didn't work properly. Um, and then just a few weeks after that was the school shooting in um, Newtown. Newtown, thank you. That's an easy thing to remember and I can't remember it. But we had been doing these devotionals e each week and I had been letting my children's minister do those um, to let her have that connection in choir. But we had these little footprints all the way around the wall and we would add them. Well, this particular night was our last night of choir. We were going out to, um, uh, well, it was actually the week before, but we were going out to rehearse in the sanctuary for our spring program. And so she had to go out and do something else. So I, I got to do the closing devotional um, unexpectedly. <laughs> you know how that goes. She had to leave unexpectedly. So I, I looked over there, and that Newtown shooting had just been that week. And I went over, and I pulled that off the wall. Defeat evil with good. I get chills just thinking about that. So we have a little moment about you know how you live with that kind of thing in the world. Um, third, fourth, and fifth graders. There've been a lot of those kind of those kind of moments connected to that devotional. You know, it's kind of like I love the whole rest of the time, and I know that's what we're we're all about. But there's something about that last little gathering time. Um, another thing I enjoy doing is um, I haven't. I haven't done it lately, but is um, doing God's names. I found this book um, just uh, searching around, and it's, it's in it's a children's um, um, interpretation and explanation of God's names and what what the different ones. And it has um, like how to say that uh, some of the Hebrew names, Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace. It has all of those, and it's, so you can focus on one of those. Or, every week or a month. And another thing I like to do, I take this page out of the elementary teacher's book, is build a word wall. And so I have these stones that I've used for umpteen things, but you can uh, have the name of God and begin to build the wall with the name of God, um, which is my rock uh, and my fortress. So it has all those uh, relations. If you want that stone pattern, I can give it to you. Um, and I printed it actually on gray construction paper. I put every manner of anything in my printer and see if it works. <laughs> <laughs>
but the gray worked really well. And I've actually started, I don't have them done, but I started where I print uh, the uh, the names on them. But you could do these and you could write them and then you could actually clean them off and use them for something else. You can also do um, worship words, some of those words in the church that we use that we never explain. So you could focus on one word per week. Um, you could do your scriptures. If you're doing a scripture memory, you could put the scripture references on the stones and go back to them. You could use them for music concepts and how music works. Um, so you're sort of building this, this whole wall. Um, and there's something to put it on the wall and keep it in the head, keep it, keep it prevalent. If it's there, not only do they refer to it, but you do. <laughs> you go back to it. Um, one of my favorite thing, and I forgot, I didn't put it on the list, and I forgot to say it yesterday. Some of you were in here from the little fourth without the instruments, are these shoes. <laughs> They're goofy, okay. Um, but how many of you have a hard time mirroring and saying right and left and saying the wrong thing? You have that problem? I, I, I was just standing there in a haze going, okay, my right to be fair left. And by that, that, that time they, they're lost. So I came up with this idea that I would paint right and left on my shoes wrong. Um, so I have, you know, this is, this is right, this is right, this is left. So when, we, when I want to say, okay, three steps to the right, and I look down, I go, yeah, I'm doing the right thing. Um, <laughs> so I found these for seven dollars, and I painted, painted little dots on them, and I put the R and the L on them. My friend Karen Gosselin and I, the first pair that we did, she bought me a pair of shoes at Walmart, and they said they were size six, but they were like this long, <laughs> and so I would flap around like a plane, um, which is just humorous as well. If any of you do black light activities? If you do the white tennis shoes, the white canvas tennis shoes, they glow in our other pair, they are white. Um, and then we put the neon strings on them, so the neon strings would glow and the white shoes, and then we had the dots, so it made it, and then you put that black ink uh, R and L on there, and so you can look down and still see that. So it, that's kind of a funny favorite thing, um, if, you don't, if you don't mind painting up your shoes. Um, then we have words on the wall. Children's books. I already talked. I've spent a whole session that involved a lot of children's books. There's the information on orange pear apple bear. If any of you were looking for that, this little book I found, and I, I showed it to my children's minister, and I showed it um, to a couple other people to see what their thoughts on it were. Um, any of you know this? It's the Quick Guide to the Discipline for Children's Ministry. Have you found this book? Um, it's published by Group, and it's Quick, quick little uh, suggestions. Okay, it's not like you, oh, there's a problem, and then you look this up. That's not, you know, it's not that kind of, wait a minute, hold that thought. You know, it's not that, but there, it's alphabetical order, and it has, like, um, biting. <laughs> biting, you know, question one of our toddlers is a biter, what do you do? Answer, realize that children bite for different reasons. Younger children bite to experience the other person. <laughs> Explore their oral sensations and soothe sore gums. Puppies do the same thing. Over here. <laughs> Some children biting, uh, I've also heard that dogs, that sometimes biting is their love language. <laughs> I am loved to death. Uh, for some children, biting is playfulness gone wrong. Others bite out of frustration or aggression when they're unable to express themselves verbally. No matter the situation, your reaction helps the child understand that biting hurts. Okay. So it's just a little kind of understanding that. Then the next one um, about you'll have for a problem, I have do's and don'ts. Anyway, it's nice, especially, this would be a great gift for somebody beginning children's work. You know? So. Yes. Repeat the name for me, Quick Guide yes. Discipline. The Quick Guide. Quick Guide. To Discipline for Children's Ministry. Is it on the sheet? Yeah, yeah. it's on the sheet. Yeah. Did I put the ISBN number and everything? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm getting good. Well, <laughs> that's really good. But I can't remember the price. I, I would tell you uh, what the price is. But that's one of those things is a one time purchase. And, I thought it was really good, but it's especially good for people who don't have a lot of experience working with children. So if you have a new, someone new to children's crime ministry, 
um, maybe let them check this out. Um, problems. Or if they come to you with a question, you say, just a minute, i got to go to the bathroom. And then you come back and say, would you want to invite for a number? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's a, a great little resource. Um, that's, a new, that's, a, that's a new favorite. Fun songs for warm-ups and recreation. Um, yesterday we did a tale of three jacks in here. Um, so you don't have that on this handout. Is there anybody who would go play that for us? I thought we could do the singing version of that. Mm -hmm. So it's an easy piano part. Mm -hmm. It is. You want the light on? No, I'm good. Okay. Um, this one is one that I created. I wanted, it had to have certain parameters. The one thing it had to have is it had to be able to improvise along with it with all the white notes, okay? Um, I wanted it in the minor key, so it would be an A minor, which don't hate me, it begins on a low A, but it's not that bad, trust me. And I wanted, what was the other thing I said? All white notes. All white notes. Mm -hmm. What else was it I said? I can't remember. Well, anyway, I wanted to be able to sing and play along with it. So those were the, my, my parameters for that. So it has, um, it's nursery rhyme. We'll do, we'll only do one or two. I guess it's the A. Right, echo me. Jack and Jill went up the hill. Jack and Jill went up the hill. To fetch a pail of water. To fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown. Jack fell down and broke his crown. And Jill came tumbling after. And Jill came tumbling after. Let's sing with good posture. Uh, good posture and good vocal production, and let's sing just that part. Ready? Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown, and Jill came tumbling after. Okay, now that's good. We can sing it like that, or we could change to a different type of singing, a different style of singing. What's a style of singing we could change to? Maybe a different country or a different accent? What could we do? Country Western. Country Western. There you go. Could we sing Jack and Jill in Country Western? All right, we need an extra bone chick on that. Right. Here we go. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Get out there and try it. 
uh, they'll do that where they won't sing, um, you know, Nets of Love. So you have to get them to sing before you can get them to sing the really good stuff. The other one that, um, and there's a lot of other benefits to that. Um, plus, sometimes they need a break. You know, you can insert that in the middle and uh, you can use it as your warm up and get them singing that they've not been singing all day. At the bottom of your sheet is insomnia. Okay? Any in chronic insomniacs in the room? <laughs> Not, you haven't get 50 yet. <laughs> okay, sleeping is totally overrated. And I wrote this, this, this goes in our camp book, um, and it, you'll recognize the melody. Be careful though, it doesn't go completely at the end like you think it's going to with the melody. So, um, and we do break the words, Crick, good strip, there too. We so we do break it up. Okay, and let's just sing it. You want to read it? Ready?